Now, believe it or not, back in the day they used to dope uh, radioactive elements such as thorium into lenses because it changed the way light went through the glass. Now, they don't do this anymore. They'd have to resort to uh, less radioactive things like lanthanum or niobium, although you could argue it's not really radioactive, it's just like a small percentage of it. But uh, no, it's not really that dangerous, but there are some lenses that are like really, really radioactive and you don't want those around, but the majority of them are pretty harmless for the most part. You know, you don't want to put them next to your head for like 24 hours a day, right? But anyways, I'm going to explain to the best of my knowledge while skipping out a lot of details for the simplicity of helping you understand how these lenses work because quite frankly, I couldn't find much information out there. Like I couldn't find any concrete to the point information of how radioactive lenses work. So I'm going to do it because one of my favorite lenses, the Super Takumar 51.4 is uh, radioactive and I have more than one, but I want to help someone out there understand how this works. So before we go on, uh, I, actually, I actually have to explain three concepts or actually two concepts. First of all, the enemy of lenses today or light is actually a refraction, dispersion and diffraction. Now we're not going to talk about diffraction. That's what you start getting once you get to like F16 or above most lenses. But we're talking about when you're shooting wide open, like a refraction and dispersion. Like these are things that cause things like chromatic aberration and uh, it's no good, it's no bueno. So uh, let me explain refraction the best that I can. Basically, whenever light passes through something such as water, plastic, prisms, glass, the light basically bends, like it shoots the light in another direction. This is a uh, refraction. Now, there's such thing called the refractive index, basically a uh, the more of a bend the light gets, the, the worse is uh, refractive index is, right? But like, I guess the less the light bends, the more straighter it goes, it's uh, got higher refractive index. Does that make sense? Now, we have that, keep that in mind, because it's very important. Like, uh, if you have a lens and you have light going through it, you don't want it shooting like the inside of your barrel, right? So uh, what they do is like they put more glass to kind of correct it, so it goes straight into the sensor. The next thing we want to talk about is uh, dispersion. Basically, once the light passes through something, it's going to separate into different colors. Imagine like a prism, you know? You have a beam of light that hits a prism and then colors spread in all directions, right? You got the reds all the way down to like the blues and the purples. Now it's much more complicated than this because uh, some colors have higher frequencies and they tend to uh, bleed out more than others. And um, basically the point I wanna make here is you don't want your colors to uh, bleed out all over the place because that's how you get uh, things like chromatic aberration, right? You want the colors to come in through the light and then go bounce back straight in little lines. Like that's the ideal situation. You want the colors all nice and packed together. You don't want them bleeding out all over the place because you want a nice picture, right? So basically, if you have a crappy prism or a crappy lens, when light disperses into different colors, like the prism uh, example, if you have the colors like perfectly uh, close together and not bleeding out all over the place, you have a good lens. But if you have a crappy lens, those colors are gonna bleed out all over the place and there's going to be like a wide gap between each color. So keep those things in mind. We have a refraction, like basically uh, the light bends at a different angle, right? When it goes through. And then you have dispersion, like uh, the colors kind of separate in different directions, right? And back in the day, they used to use thorium because of the way it interacted with the light, you know, like when you put thorium into a lens, what it's going to do is going to increase its refractive index. Uh, to my best, to the best of my knowledge, the way I understood this is you have a piece of glass, a normal piece of glass, right? And the light's going to go through it, it's going to shoot in another direction. But if you have some radioactive elements like thorium, it's going to kind of pull the light to go a certain direction. Like 
it's not going to shoot all over the place. It's going to more push it down this way, like this, right? It's going to go straight to the sensor. Well, not exactly straight, but it's going to help it, help it not go all over the place. It's going to help push it in the right direction. Think of it as, uh, the best example I saw this online was guardrails, you know? Like you're on a highway and it's going to tell you, nope, you're going to go this way, you're not going to go that way. So that's, uh, it helps refraction. And what this means is, since the light is not going all over the place, the manufacturer doesn't need to use as much glass. So it could use less glass, use thinner glass and less glass elements between the sensor and your picture, like between your subject and the sensor. Now, um, if you have less glass between the sensor and whatever you're taking a picture of, you're gonna have higher quality because uh, every time light passes through something, you know, you're losing a little bit, you know, you know, you're losing a little bit of quality. So a lot of these modern lenses have a lot of a lot of glass elements because they're trying to make up for the fact that they don't use radioactive elements anymore, right? So that's one thing to keep in mind. Less elements, cheaper, and thinner glass, right? Thank you, Thorium. Next up is uh, dispersion. Uh, when the light passes through one of the lenses, it's gonna like spread out into different directions. That's no good. When you have radioactive elements, this kind of lowers the dispersion like it helps the colors come closer together so they don't bleed out all over the place and the end result is you have less chromatic aberration now when manufacturers make lenses they add in lots of elements uh, that's that means more glass in there some of it corrects the direction of the glass so it helps the refraction some of it helps with the dispersion and like i said in the end you're going to have a, a big lens with lots of glass in there which is going to raise the price so the way like radioactive lenses work is they're going to first of all increase the refractive index of the glass so that means when light passes through it it's not going to bend this way it's going to bend closer to to this like this right straight straight into the sensor and it's going to help with the dispersion because the, it's going to keep the colors from bleeding out all over the place and kind of come closer to each other and uh give you a much more better picture. Now, when you're shooting, for example, at f6, f8, f11, you have a small hole in your camera, or not that small, right? So like you got a, basically a beam of light shooting through, goes straight into a sensor, everything is wonderful. I think everyone here knows this, that when you shoot uh, uh, higher apertures, uh, you don't have much of a problem, unless you get to f16, which is another video. But, when you open up the lens to let in a lot more light, I want you to think of it this way. So the photons or the light are basically cracked up sheep, right? They're just running through. They want to bleed out all over the place. That's why when you open the lens all the way, you start getting problems like barrel distortion. You start getting chromatic aberration, some vignetting, things like that. Now you have a radioactive lens. Think of the thorium atoms as a kind of sheepdogs you know you got all these like really uh, these really awesome sheepdogs and when all these cracked up sheep come in through your lens because you open it all the way they're going to basically guide the sheep to go in the direction you want it to go so so it's gonna point the sheep in the right direction point the photons of light in the right direction it's not gonna let them spread all over the place it's gonna kind of herd them straight into a sensor in a more orderly fashion so that's my best explanation of how radioactive lenses work. Uh, I, let out, I left out a ton of details, trust me, but this is the best way I could describe it. They don't use radioactive elements in glass anymore uh, because you know people are afraid of radiation, right? And rightly so. But as a result, we're basically trying to catch up to the old ways, you know, like uh, People think that if you have a vintage lens, it's not as good as a modern lens. And you know, in terms of autofocus, they're absolutely right, you know. But in terms of glass quality, we just haven't matched uh, the lenses that they used to make back in the day, you know. Like, they basically have to make up for the fact that they can't use radioactive elements in glass anymore. And they do so by adding more and more glass elements into the lens increasing its weight, increasing its price, decreasing the quality, but trying to make up for it with coatings and such, but that doesn't work so much. So 
I recommend you guys pick up a radioactive lens. You know, you might you might like it. You know, it's really nice. And yeah, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you around.